All right, Bree, was it me, just me, or just those of my generation that when you hear the word conjunction, you immediately get the song conjunction, junction, what's your function in your head? Is that just me? You know the schoolhouse rock anthem from the 70s, although I didn't see them until the 80s, so I'm not that old. Anyway, there's going to be a conjunction tonight, as you heard Bree talk about. Not a hookup of words and phrases and clauses, like the song says, but a great conjunction when two astronomical objects get in line, sort of, and appear to be really close together. Well, how great? Well, tonight, Jupiter and Saturn, as you just heard, will look like they're right next to each other, the closest they will ever be, about a tenth of a degree apart, close enough to be able to cover the both of them with a pinky finger if you hold it up to the sky. And what is happening tonight doesn't happen that often. The last time, 400 years ago. The last time it happened at night, about 800 years ago. And maybe you've heard it described as the Christmas star. But we asked a professional astronomer, the University of Idaho's Dr. Jason Barnes, who has a PhD in planetary science, and about the only thing he says it has to do with Christmas is the timing of the event this year, not the Christmas event more than 2,000 years ago. Does it have anything to do with the fact that, like, some people are speculating that this could have been the Christmas star that highlighted, you know, the birth of Jesus and that the wise men followed and that it was 2,000 years ago? Is there any, any truth to that? The way the planets move, we know exactly where they were 2,000 years ago, uh, and it doesn't seem to be consistent with that, so... So you're basing this on facts. What is that? <laughs> um, you know, the motion of planets is something that we've understood for a couple hundred years now, and that's one of the things that it's really uh, possible to calculate exactly uh, where things were. A lot of people, I mean, that's what I read today. It says, the event has been dubbed the Christmas star because some astronomers have theorized the star of Bethlehem could have been a rare conjunction involving both Jupiter and Saturn. Not true? I think someone is, is getting excited about things that there's no reason to think that that's true. All right. Well, let's talk about how rare this is. 400 years ago, it happened last time. The last time it happened at night, though, was 800. Is that correct? These conjunctions happen every 20 years, okay? Uh, so they're not particularly unusual. But uh, what's unusual is exactly how close these two were um, after uh, when they go to their conjunction every 20 years, okay? So sometimes because of the inclination of the orbits, they're close together, but not necessarily particularly close. But this one is really close and it's the closest yeah the closest uh in 400 years and the closest visible in 800 years. when you say close i mean i've heard what tenth of a degree how close is that how how can i visualize that so one tenth of a degree is about one fifth the diameter of the full moon so they're close enough together that if you don't have your glasses prescription up to date you probably wouldn't be able to tell the to tell the difference between them to split them apart so it's a good eye test they're so close together um you know, there's some genuine concern that people are going to worry that this is a UFO or something weird. It's a truly unusual uh, and rare uh, and, and striking um, appearance in the sky. How rare this is, how should we look at this in its uniqueness? Well, for instance, like 400 years ago, Galileo was first turning his telescope toward the sky. Uh, and 800 years ago, we, didn't, we thought that the Earth was the center of the universe. So um, this is really an unusual uh, and rare event um, to be this uh, this close together. Um, and so really it has been a very, very long time uh, since any of humanity has been able to, to see something this spectacular. Picture like that one of some of the others you saw there were from our Weather Watcher Facebook group. Thank you for sending those in. Dr. Barnes says, so if you head outside in about 30 minutes, sunset about 5-11, I'm not correct, and you look to the southwest, you should have no doubt you are seeing the great conjunction, assuming the skies will part for you. It will be that bright and obvious in the sky. Both Jupiter and Saturn are already both very bright. And this close together, you can't miss it. And if you have a telescope, again, you should be able to see them both in the same field of view, something professional astronomers like Dr. Barnes has never even seen before. Now you know why they call it great. And when we are t talking close, that, of course, is a relative term in a relative sense. Jupiter and Saturn will look close, but Dr. Barnes says they will still be half a billion miles apart in the galaxy.